Hey guys, how's it going? It is Travis Mortz with the Forest Hill Film Lab. Uh, today I'm going to talk about a really important subject actually. It is what makes a real photograph. What does a real photograph consist of? Um, that's a, it's pretty, a, it's a pretty broad term actually. Um, a photograph could be anything. It could be a, it could be a negative. It could be a, a photographic print. It could be a wet plate. It could be a daguerreotype. It could be a Polaroid. It could be so many different things. But what, what is it that makes a real photograph? And uh, basically, I want to talk to you guys about that. I've got some, some literature here to back me up. I've got some samples here to back me up, and I like to just tell you guys a little bit about. Um, this isn't necessarily an opinion, um, so I want to I want to make that abundantly clear. This is not um, necessarily my opinion of what a photograph is. This is this is just me trying to share with you guys some information I found about what a photograph is. Um, so, sort of a factual um, informational video, if you will, not necessarily a, a argument or anything like that. Um, so. I hope nobody's feelings get hurt by this. I'm just trying to educate and inform people about the things that inspire me and get me motivated to um, make photographs. And hopefully you guys will also get motivated to make some photographs as well. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna kind of grab some of these books and get started and then uh, explain to you guys some samples. So let's get. All right, so I'm gonna read to you guys. I got a couple books here and I just wanted to use these books as sources because um, in my past videos, I've been called um, a whole flurry of different names, which I think is great. Uh, a hipster is one of the more popular ones. Um, a purist or an elitist are some of my favorites. And I just want you guys to know I am none of these things. I am just a photographer who likes photography and making photographs. And um, I'm just sharing it with you guys because I, I really like it so much that my girlfriend's tired of hearing me talk about it. So I have to talk about it in my dark room by myself. So that's what we're doing today. Um, I don't want you guys to think that uh, this is like some purist bullshit. This is just, I'm just, I guess I'm defending myself. So here we go. This book is The Photography Principles and Practice, 4th edition. This book was originally released in... 1927, first published. So I think it's safe to say that this is the history book, right? So the first chapter one, introduction, I'm just going to read the first sentence. Photography, from the Greek meaning to draw with light, is the science of obtaining images of objects by the action of light on sensitive substances. Wow. It's a science of obtaining images of objects. Um, so I want you guys to remember that light on sensitive sub substances. So that is the first thing I want to share with you guys. Just a quick little excerpt that was really important to me. And then so here we've got Black and White Photography, a basic manual. If you guys haven't picked up this book, this is such an excellent book. It basically, start to finish, the, in the, uh, the introduction even says that it's basically made for someone who has no knowledge of a camera at all start to finish. So, somebody was so kind as to highlight in this book basically all of the things that I wanted to read to you guys. So, here we go. Photographic film consists of a transparent plastic base that holds a light sensitive emulsion. The emulsion consists of a gelatin and silver halide crystals. Wow, okay. Uh, the gelatin acts, pr acts primarily to bind the crystals to the plastic base while the silver halide crystals trap light. Uh, light acts like a glue to bind the silver crystals together. Upon exposure to light, these crystals clump together. At first, this change is invisible, but during the chemical development, the silver clumping is converted into a buildup of visible black metallic silver referred to as density. So what that's telling us is that film is that light sensitive material that the last book had mentioned. And that actually is a nice little explanation of how it works. We have light sensitive silver halide crystals in there that clump together to make visible darkness. Um, let's see. What else did I want to read out of here? Okay, photographic prints are made by exposing paper to light projected through a negative. That's what the negative's for. Once we're down to make the print, it's ready to make the print, we put it in a enlarger and we project the negative onto um, 
you know, light sensitive paper. And it says most prints are made with the use of an enlarger. That is very true. So um, I don't know if you guys could tell, but the, the point I'm trying to make here is that photographs are made with light. Photographs are light being captured onto a sensitive substance. That is, I just read the first pages of both of those books uh, illustrated that. And so because of that, it's photography, True, truly photography is not to be shooting film. I'm not gonna say that shooting film is truly photography, but shooting light sensitive substances and capturing light scientifically like that first book mentioned that is still the art of photography that has not changed there's no reason why that would have changed we're still i'm still using the same developers that ansel adams was using i'm still using the same you know papers and films in some uh cases there's all these materials are still here so why would the why would the meaning or the uh, interpretation of photography have changed just because we've gained new technology, which is our JPEGs and our RAW files? Those are, that's digital imaging. Um, it's it's kind of hard for me to tell you guys that, but photography, like I read, read to you guys, is the, the scientific act of capturing light on sensitive substances. Um, here we have some negatives. These are my sensitive substances. I captured light. These were shot two, three days ago. When I captured the light on them, I had to develop them in the chemical process that was mentioned in the book. And that, and these were developed. So that these are photographs. They're negatives, but they're photographs because they're light writings on a sensitive substance. Um, here we have, these are from the early 1900s. These were given to me by an old man. These are glass positives of some crazy stuff. Some settlers, people are wearing like bonnets and stuff. These are photographs. They're not negatives, they're positives, but they're light captured onto a sensitive substance. What else do we have here? This is something I picked up just the other day. These are tintypes. These are photographs, light captured on a sensitive substance, okay? This is a photograph. Now the reason I'm making this argument to you guys, like I said, it's actually not an argument, it's just I'm talking about it, because a while back I saw this video online and it was this guy, it's like this guy in India and he was in a dark room and he was all about photography and no one called him a hipster, that's for sure, and um, he was talking about prints and he was saying how come Inkjet prints are considered photographs when they're actually ink on paper. He said, you know, you wouldn't consider a print of a painting a painting. You would consider it a print of a painting. And that got me thinking. I never really thought of it that way. You know, I, I was used to having my digital photos, printing them out. But what I started to realize was that when I was printing those out, the quality of the print was 100% dependent on the the printer the the printer that was used or rather the company I went with and that was problematic to me so now my quality of image I have this file which is my photograph but it's not it's not a photograph because it's not light captured on a sensitive substance what a what a digital file is is it's light seen by a digital sensor and then interpolated into one of three colors and then that pixel saves data, and then it saves a file in zeros and ones, and then you have a computer file, just like a music file or a Word document or um, a movie that you download. It's the same thing. It's a computer file. It's not, this isn't, I mean, I've got eight, ten rolls of film on here scanned, but this isn't, these aren't photographs. These are, you know, these are photographs. This, this is a photograph of me and my dad. This is 20 years old. So that's a, that's a photograph. This is light captured on a sensitive substance. This photo has been around longer than we've been buying digital cameras. I trust that shit. So that's what I'm trying to explain here is that like here, here we have, I, I have a print that I ordered from Bay Photo Lab. I don't really need to take it out, but I will. And this is a print. It's not a photograph though. And it, the reason it's not a photograph is because light was not 
projected onto this. I mean, it's got printing on the back. This was ink printed, splattered strategically onto a piece of paper that was never light sensitive. So what's that tell me? That this is a print of, a, of an image. It's not a photograph of anything. It's a print, a digital print of an image. This was made with a computer. Uh, the source file was a negative, so I have got, I've got that going for me, but if this was a digital photo, the source file would have been a computer file, and the, the process essentially would have been done by a computer from start to finish, and there would be no photographing at all. There's no, there's no light being captured or saved by any sort of emulsion. The fact that you could delete a photo right after taking it is proof of that. That light, you're not saving light. You're saving megabits. You're saving, you know, megapixels and things like that. So, um, you know, I'll actually leave that out. That is an inkjet print. And then here is a darkroom print. We've got the edges curled up because this is fiber paper, which means that this actually isn't even made out of trees. This is made out of cloth, like linen, like fiber. This print will last over a hundred years because it's archival. I had to wash it for 15 minutes. And this blackness you see is not ink. That is silver clumped together making darkness. Silver. So if, I mean, if we're going to compare the value of things, this is made with silver, real silver, and this is made with real ink. And so the, you know, it's, it has to be recognized that there is a value difference in the two mediums. And we also have to recognize the fact that one is not the same as the other. Um, you know, if you, if you made something with a CAD machine and a computer program, it's not the same as hand making something. If you made something with a computer on a lathe, it's not the same as a dude making something by hand with a chisel and a lathe. That's, they're not the same thing. One is done by man and one is done by computer. And that's okay, but let's call it what it is. This is photography. This is photography. This is photography. This is and this is digital printing, and there's digital. This is digital imaging. You know, it's it's the same act to make it. It's the same act to make it, but um, you know the 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 thing is, is that the act of photography is not one single thing. It's not just the pressing of the shutter. It'd be nice if that's how easy it was, but you know the act of photography is all of it, the whole shebang. Um, all right, so like I like I had already mentioned, yes, I scan I scan a lot of my negatives, which is you know um, maybe maybe it would even seem hypocritical. I I don't want you guys to think that I'm against digital files. I love digital files. Digital files files are awesome. It's 2017. I have a Dropbox account. I text my friends photos. I do all the same stuff. I love it. I love it. But the thing is, is that my source, the source of my images is something that's going to last longer. So the files are just play to me. They're just an extra thing. So I wanted to read this part of Ansel Adams' The Print um, just to kind of give you guys some insight. And this is, like I said, I'm talking about photographs, prints, but images as a, as a whole. But here we go. Before we begin to print, we should consider the negative for what it is. The source of the information required for the creation of the print. Although the negative is an intermediate step between the subject and the print, it also represents a starting point itself. Uh, we visualize the final image as best we can, and we can learn to judge the potential of the negative for fulfilling our visualization. Um, and we're also free in printing to enhance our original visualization to express, for expressive reasons. Our ability to do so will be limited by the information on the negative and by our printing craft. That could easily be applied to digital manipulation. Ansel Adams himself said it is okay if you want to manipulate to meet your original visualization. That's what he's after. He's after the final product. But we have to know that the, the taking of the photograph is not the final step of being a photographer. There's more to that. So when we're shooting on the automatic cameras that spit it out immediately, we're looking at the screen right away, we lose a lot of the whole experience. The whole experience of photography is the anticipation, the learning, your learning curve of figuring out what you did right and wrong on the last roll or whatever it may be. 
um, but also it's about seizing light and capturing it light actually capturing light so um, but this part that I thought was very important is that the the negative is the source of the information which is what we're doing. I mean, it's 2017. We got to keep up with the times. My negatives are the source of the information I need to do what the next step is. Right now, the next step is scanning and posting on Instagram. But you know what? 20 years from now, I still have the source of the information to do with what I want. I can still make a print in 20 years because I have the source of the information. Now, if the source of the information is on this, this this might get lost in 20 years. I'm not gonna throw it, but I, you know, you could lose that. And if the source of the information is just a digital file, it's just fragile. It's just really fragile. So um, that is very interesting to me though. The, the negative is just a step along the way. It's an intermediate step on the way to the print. And the print, like I said, I like inkjet prints. They're great, they're very convenient, but I'm just saying the, the purist in me is trying to explain to you guys what a real photograph is. And a real, real photograph is photograph, photo saving onto a light sensitive substance. Um, let's see here. Um, here we go. Exposure, the amount of light permitted to fall upon the sensitive emulsion. Um, and then it says development, the reduction of the exposed light sensitive halides of the emulsion to visible metallic silver. Like I said earlier, the clumping, that's what development is. It's removing the reduction of the exposed light sensitive halides. Um, so that's, I just want to read that part. That's what exposure is that, and these books all illustrate photography as exposing something light sensitive to light, right? I mean, that's every single one of these books has said it. Um, I'm not the guy saying it. These are these are photography books. This is uh, this is the Encyclopedia of Photography. Uh, here we go. This is uh, about plates, and I just thought this was a cool sentence. Though this article is about film, the word film is taken in its broadest sense, meaning the photographic negative. In speaking of the photographic negative, we cannot omit preference to plate emulsions. So they're talking about film being. It could be anything. Film could be. Uh, a plate, it could be a 4x5, it could be a 120, 35 millimeter. It's just the light sensitive silver. Um, let's see what we've got in this book. I just kind of wanted to show you, read to you guys all these things. Oh, here we go. Photographic printing papers. This is how, what, what makes paper work. I was, I was interested to read this. Silver halide grains, crystals of chloride, bromide, and iodide salts of silver are the key to the photographic process. They record the light falling upon them, and when produced, when processed, excuse me, when processed, produce a metallic silver image of proper structure to give the final print. The physical and chemical nature of the silver halide grains and the binder which carries them are modified by additional reagents to produce the desired print quality. So I mean, this is like explaining photography like chemistry, which it is, and it's explaining that like this shit is. Very like photography is very much this capturing light on silver halide crystals. That it's like every single paragraph I read is kind of just solidifying the whole reason I'm doing this video, and it's basically to just explain that photographs are light on something, it, it needs to be light on something. It can't just be um, this file we made with our phone. It's fun, it's a fun idea, but we just need to separate digital imaging to photographs. And my, you know, my scans go from photographs to digital images, which is fine. I, who cares? It's not, it's not a bad thing to have digital images. I think they're absolutely great. But when someone says, I shot like 300 photos today. Well, like it, realistically, you shot 300 files today. Because 300 photos would be 300 pieces of light that need to be developed tomorrow. Photos. Photographs. Um, here we go. This is uh, photo sensitive. Was the this is a glossary in the encyclopedia. Photo sensitive material which is chemically or physically changed by the action of light, physically or chemically. Neither of those apply to my iPhone. My iPhone is not physically or chemically changed by light ever, unless maybe I left it in the sun and it got real hot. And uh, 
So that's the, I mean, if that's if that's what makes my phone a photograph, I guess that's true. Um, and I also saw this in here. I wanted to read photogenic. Producing or emitting light, incorrectly used for a subject of which excellent photographs may be made. So there you go. We're all learning something new. When you say that kid's really photogenic, you're basically just saying there's a bunch of light bouncing off that kid's face. Um, and then the last book I have here, I'm just going to read you. This is the Dictionary of Photography. I found this for a dollar, and I was like, I know there's going to be something in here that I like. And it's the, I'm just going to read the explanation of photography so you guys could see it. And this is, I mean, this is the Dictionary of Photography. It, it, maybe it's not the most official book out there, but everything else in here seems to be true. So if everything else in here seems to be true, this is probably true. Uh, photography. The science or art of producing pictures by the action of light upon prepared light-sensitive materials. As commonly understood, photography is the technique of producing pictures on film and on photographic printing paper through the agency of a camera. Wow. Well, that solves it. I should have just read that. Science or art of producing pictures on light-sensitive materials. Pretty simple. That's, that's photography. So when people out there call me a hipster, that's fine, but I would like to correct you. I'm a photographer. That's all I like doing. I just like photography. I just like capturing light on light sensitive materials and it's great. And I, I hope that you guys do it too. That's what I want. Um, I wanted to just show you guys some of these examples. I don't even really think the video needs to be much longer than this. Uh, I, I wanted to just read through some of the books. Um, show you guys some of the scans that I made. These, I mean, they just look so great. If you look inside here, you can see them. They're excellent. And uh, show you some photographs. These are real photographs made with light. You know, even good or bad, better or worse, it doesn't matter. They're made with light, and that's what that's what matters. These were all captured with light. So. Anyways, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it for you. And until next time, keep making photographs.